Hello, I'm Mark Blunden and this is the Standards Tech and Science Daily podcast. Coming up, sustainable jet fuel controversy and the future of battery-powered aviation. A Virgin Atlantic radio ad claiming the airline was the first to fly transatlantic on 100% sustainable aviation fuel has been banned by the Advertising Standards Agency for misleading consumers that the propellant was greener than it really is. The airline says it's committed to net zero by 2050 and was using a global industry term for fossil alternative fuels. So we asked Finlay Asher from Flight Industry Environmental Campaign Group Safe Land to clarify exactly what this type of fuel is and isn't. We don't like using this term in our organisation because it defines the fuel as definitely sustainable and actually we think a lot of it isn't. We prefer to use alternative jet fuel. Now it's generally split into two categories. There's biofuels that's produced from biomass and electrofuels produced from electricity. The majority though is biofuels and actually the majority that's used today is waste oil and fat. This was the fuel that was used in this transatlantic flight. We don't think that is a very sustainable pathway. There's very little waste oil and fat in the world. You know, in the UK, we already import the majority of this from China and Malaysia because we don't have enough left here ourselves. So it's a bit of a dead end technology. And we we also really risk incentivizing deforestation. Finley's an aerospace engineer and engine designer. And we also asked about the current picture for engine technology versus the boom in aviation demand. Well, this is what I was working on, more efficient aircraft engines and aircraft. Historically, we've been improving the efficiency of jet engines and and aircraft. Over the past 50 years, we've got big efficiency savings. And we always talk about this. The problem is aviation growth, air traffic growth, like massively outstrips this. So we might be able to push for maybe 1% efficiency improvement per year. But the last 10 years, we were expanding by 5% per year. And, And actually, that efficiency improvement makes flying cheaper. It means more people fly. And it might even supercharge emissions. So this is something why well, we can't just rely on technology or on fuels and why our group says well actually we need to look at other regulations that are going to control emission. Plus the materials used and their effectiveness in cutting emissions. At an aircraft level you can have more aerodynamic wings, you can have lighter materials, composite carbon fibres being used instead of metals. At an engine level you want to push for better propulsive efficiency by making the bypass ratio of the engine bigger, that's why you see jet engines that get bigger and bigger in diameter as the years progress. You also got hotter, higher pressure cores that improve the thermodynamic efficiency of the engines. We are getting into marginal gains with conventional aircraft configurations, what we call the tube and wing design. I expect that what we'll begin to see is something called the open rotor. This is an engine that doesn't have the nacelle, the engine cowling around it. It looks more like a propeller, but it's sort of a cross between the the turbofans that you have today and propellers that you tend to see on regional aircraft. Finley says it's startups, including the likes of Dutch firm Elysian, rather than the bigger players who are leading the way in hybrid and battery-powered flight tech. You're starting to see startups like Elysian you mentioned and a few others that are developing hydrogen like Zeroavia or Elysian which is electric, battery electric or, or hybrid electric. Basically this is possible. There is limits to like energy storage and weight and volume with both batteries and hydrogen that need to be worked through. That's why we, we think we definitely need to fly as efficiently as possible. While this technology is possible, it's going to take time. It's going to take probably 10, 15 years before we see anything at significant size. So that's why we need to also focus on fossil fuel powered aircraft and properly pricing those or these other technologies that are more nascent won't be able to compete. But it is really exciting. There is kind of a revolution around the corner in terms of the next kind of chapter in aviation history and design. And what Safe Landing is calling for in terms of regulatory reform. Big problem is international aviation emissions are not included in the COP process. When countries submit their emissions targets, they don't include them. We would like to see them included. We'd like to see them discussed and negotiated in the COP process and ultimately have some carbon budgets that's divided fairly around the planet and then also like at a national level fairly around the country to airports. A key part of that as well, it's not just carbon, it's also the non-carbon impact. So we've got contrails. We'd really like to see sort of higher emissions pricing applied particularly to transatlantic flights that tend to produce more warming contrails so that we can measure and mitigate those and pay for it. More locally, we're really interested in hybrid electric aircraft flying a bit slower so we can kind of democratize air travel. 